good morning and welcome to worship from St. John's Jedburgh. And uh, we'd like to start our prayer this morning with some beautiful music from our organist, Isabel. Thank you, Isabel. <laughs> Jeremy, who will be uh, assisting with our service today and sharing our gospel reading. Now, how about we pause for a moment and quiet our hearts and minds and also hold before God the deep desire that uh, Facebook will allow us to record this entire service without a glitch. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Summer or winter, seed time or harvest, our lives are continually in your hand. And, and I, I never, never forget, forget your law of love. In success or failure, Sickness or health, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light upon my path. By day or by night, at dawn or at dusk, please accept, loving God, the vows my mouth freely makes and teach me, Holy One, your ways. For most wonderful God, you have sown in us a seed which longs to put down deep roots and then grow towards the light. By your spirit, please tend and nurture that which you have planted, and in spite of hard seasons or the work of evil predators, may we bring forth a harvest of wonder, love and grace. Loving God, sower and reaper of love, we admit to you that we, we are like stony fields. We are capable of growing goodness and sharing it around. But, but also we allow goodness, goodness to wither and weeds to flourish. Your mercy has taken root in us. But, but we, we do, do not share enough of it with others. Your justice has grown on us. But, but we, we have inadequately implemented it. Your truth has showered on us. But we have let it run to waste. Your love has blossomed among us. But we have been slow to set fruit. Well, most loving God, please open the furrows of our lives to receive again the seeds of your gospel. Rain your mercy upon us. Share your warmth and light into every dark place. Bring forth in us not the harvest we deserve, but, but the, the harvest, harvest that, that in your glorious love you have destined, destined for us. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Listen to this word. Where sin abounds, love much more abounds. Receive forgiveness from such abundance and give thanks. You, my brothers and sisters, are among the richest people in the world. You have the wealth of Christ with you always, even to the end of time. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And let's say together this song of praise. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things no eye has seen. Pour into our hearts such love of you that, by loving you in all things and above all things, we may surpass all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We're going to invite Jeremy to share our gospel with you today. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, and since they had no depth of soil, since they had no depth of soil, when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. The parable of the sower explained. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for that which is sown on rocky ground, this is the one that hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for that which is sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the world with the word, and it yields nothing. But as for that which is sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who bears fruit and yields, in one case hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, quite a familiar parable there and of course we're quite lucky in that it's one of the few times that uh, Jesus doesn't just leave us hanging, actually provides an explanation. Perhaps he was getting the sense that his listeners just weren't getting it and that he felt the need to be much more blunt. Now for me that very familiar parable calls to mind my mother again. And not just because she was a very astute gardener. I mean, she was a careful gardener, and of course she would not plant things where she knew that they were not going to grow. There was no point to that. The reason why I'm called to think about my mother is because of her attitude to extravagance. And this is ultimately a parable about extravagance. 
Now, in my very careful mother's eyes, extravagance was something to be avoided because, well, to be frank, there wasn't a lot to be extravagant with. So, what used to really test her patience was our attitude to the Milo tin because we felt that six heaped teaspoons of Milo in a glass of milk was an appropriate way to make a drink. She thought it was extravagant. We also thought that um, she should buy that lurid lime green mix-up um, cordial, which people here call juice, um, and she refused to do that, and she would say, I don't buy that because you would only drink it, because it was appealing to children, and she felt that we would just waste it. If she bought something less appealing, perhaps we would go a bit slower with it. Now, I know you love hearing about my mother, but what's that got to do with God and this parable? Well, this parable, as well as being a lesson about hearing and responding to the Word of God, is also a parable about the very extravagance of God's love. Anyone who listened to that parable and understood just how precious seed is would have been scandalised by the extravagant use of the seed in the parable. I think it highlights for us the extravagance of God's love. God does not just sow the seed of love in the places that God is confident that it will grow. God extravagantly sows the seeds and offer of his love to those for whom he knows it may not necessarily take hold and grow. Our God, I think, is much more optimistic and generous than I think we are. Our God has an eye for those who are at the fringes and at the margins and at the most need of his word of transforming hope. We don't necessarily appreciate that because, you know what, Jeremy, we work damn hard at doing the right things to follow God's law. So why should God bother to give any of his love to the great unwashed who couldn't be bothered. Well, that's because God is not us. God is profligate with God's love. God is extravagant with God's love. God is optimistic and hopeful and loving in the generosity of what is offered to all people. So I'm wondering if today we may have the capacity to respond to the generous profligacy of God's love. Aware that all of those different soils are part of our own lives, but also hopeful that God's love will touch the lives of those who perhaps we personally might not see as worthy. God sees all of us as worthy of love. God sows in hope and love that we will respond. And God continues to respond to us. So I'm going to ask Isabel just to play a little something. And I think this one, Isabel, is the one where there's words that are very appropriate and if you're ever looking in our hymn book, what number is it? Well, it's in the CH4 hymn book. Yep. Many have it. CH4, 226. Number 226. But I'll let you listen to the tune. Thank you, Isabel. <laughs>
uh, pray this litany of thanksgiving. <clears throat> it is wonderful, loving God, the way your holy scriptures, shaped in a distant age and in another land, open our eyes and ears, mind and soul to encounter the word of life. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. It is wonderful, loving God, that the word within the words still touches our eyes and enables us to recognise the beauty of your handiwork. In the folds of the cheviots and eildens, the rush of the jet water, the teviot and tweed, and in the green abundance that surrounds us. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. It's wonderful, loving God, that the books of your library still confront our distorted and degraded relationship and lift our minds to perceive the beauty which you intended us to embrace and enjoy through childhood and youth, the middle years and old age. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. It's wonderful, living God, that the books of the Bible still challenge us to hear themes of judgment and mercy within the shame and the glory of our towns and villages and cities. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. It's wonderful, loving God, that your living word meets us in many places of prayer, the cathedrals and chapels, meeting halls and house churches, study groups and Sunday schools, youth fellowships and conventions. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. It is most wonderful beyond all words that you chose to embody your living word, Jesus, who came to seek and save all that is twisted, diseased and lost. For Jesus of Nazareth, with his warm-hearted humanity, his crucified divinity and his sublime resurrection over evil and death. Let thanksgiving and praise rise to you this day and always. Well, the peace of God is here to stay. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you, Andrew. And also with all of you out there as well. Peace be in your hearts and homes this day. So how about we pray for others? Well, today, like every day, there are people who are desperately hungry for a slice of bread or a handful of rice. Well, there are churches and agencies trying to bring them nourishment. Loving God, please hear the cry of human need and bless those who are attempting to answer it. Today, like every day, there are people falsely accused and wrongly convicted or imprisoned for religious and political conviction. And there are churches and agencies trying to set them free. Loving, Loving God, God, please hear, hear the cry of human, human need, need and bless and those, those who are attempting to answer it. Today, like every day, there are serious injustices perpetrated in our cities and rural communities. And there are churches and agencies trying to bring about change. Loving God, please hear the cry of human need and bless those who are attempting to answer it. And today, like every day, there are people accidentally killed or injured or diseased and dying, shocked and weeping. And there are churches and agencies trying to ease their distress. Loving God, please hear the cry of human need and bless those who are attempting to answer it. And today, like every day, there are many unemployed and unwanted, or people addicted to alcohol and drugs or in prostitution and crime. And there are churches and agencies trying to help them. 
Loving God, please hear the cry of human need and bless those who are attempting to answer it. And today, like every day, there is hidden frustration and sorrow, loneliness and fear, mental torment and self-hatred. And there are churches and agencies trying to bring relief. Loving, Loving God, please hear the cry of human need and bless those who are attempting to answer it. So let's behold before God the people and places that uh, we know of that need our prayers. And today I ask you to pray for Rosemary and Ruth, for Susan, for Eddie, for Jocelyn and Joyce, Fiona, Joan, Elizabeth, Imogen. For those anxious and worried about reintegration into public life with the relaxation of restrictions. community here at St John's, that at St Mary's, Trinity and Old Parish, Jedburgh Baptist and those who meet in other ways. As our Father Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. God, our help in ages past. Nothing in space or time can come between you and us. Nor can we ever be lost, not even in the immensities of eternity. In all and above all and through all, keep us close to and aware of the heartbeat of your almighty love. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. May God be the light on your path, the breeze on your back, the music in your ears, the song on your lips, the curiosity in your mind, the happiness in your heart, and the peace in your spirit. Go well, in the name, the name of, of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isabel. Something to send us out. joining us in prayer today and I haven't looked closely but I'm hoping that everything was recorded appropriately. Uh, St John's is now open for private prayer and we're very glad to do that and we're still in the process of responding to the latest advice and uh, hopefully looking forward to the 
very um, not distant time when we'll be able to gather again here in St John's uh, to worship our God together. Be good, behave yourself, and if not, go out and like Jeremy, pick up some rubbish from the side of the road to make up for all your bad stuff. Go in peace. Not that Jeremy is making up for bad stuff, he just does it because he's a good citizen. Blessings on you all.